Tales from the Flipside family, welcome back to Comic Shop Talk. What we're gonna talk about today is, you know, in the past we've talked plenty about sourcing. Um, it's probably every store owner's favorite thing to do is to buy old cool stuff and dig through it. It's like Christmas every day. But now we gotta sell the stuff, right? We gotta, we gotta make some money on it so that we can buy more cool stuff. So most people know about, of course, the eBay. It's ubiquitous, everybody knows about it. But one platform that not a lot of people are talking about that's expanding is TCG Player. And I wanna go through the story of how we came to TCG Player. If you've been watching, you know through um, our event series that we talk about running tournaments. So we run Magic the Gathering. We're probably a 50-50 store, comics and Magic the Gathering with a little bit of uh, other collectibles, you know, thrown in there. You know, we became a pretty big Magic the Gathering singles player in, in our area. And uh, we got contacted by TCG player about, I'd say five and a half, maybe six years ago uh, to come down uh, to like a symposium. They wanted to talk about uh, getting on board with their online sales. So, uh, I didn't actually go. Uh, two of our other owners went, Josh and uh, Sabato, and they went down uh, to Jersey, uh, Edison, New Jersey, and they had a big, uh, like a mini convention for a day on, um, you know, uh, trading card games. And um, they gave us, leaving when we signed up, they gave us this free camera. And this camera, when plugged into your computer and hooked up to their system, scans cards like one per two seconds. It's really fast. So if you've hand pulled all your good cards out and you want to sell them online, you just put them through this and the, you know, it, it's up here and you get the right depth and you can just sling cards through here faster than you know what to do with. Right? And pretty great system and it go and you automatically put them on your store up on TCG Player. Um, now, TCG Player for, for a long time was uh, just collectible card games. And it really started with a core of like Magic, Pokemon, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And they've expanded out to a lot of other ones. Uh, some of the smaller ones uh, they do sell on there. Also, we don't uh, sell most of those other card games. So, um, you know, we're not up there on that, but uh, it looks like it works exactly the same way. The Skinner is really good for Magic the Gathering. Uh, Pokemon, because of the way they make the cards, sometimes it's difficult with some of the foilings that they that the picture works. But there's also, a, you can add them in manually pretty quickly also. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me to say this at all. I'm just giving you guys what we use. Um, we had been like just lightly with them for about three years. And when COVID hit, we pretty much put our, almost our entire inventory, 40,000 rare uh, magic cards up. Uh, Cause we weren't open. So we had to be doing something. So we put all the cards up on their, uh, on their platform. And we quickly did about a thousand cards a week during COVID. That has since gone down, but we still do about uh, 600 cards every two weeks. Um, and they're all rare. So they're all gonna be, we refuse to sell any of our rares for less than a dollar. So they're gonna be from a dollar up to, you know, you know the magic prices. It can go up to any price. Um, the other thing they have is they have fulfillment, which because we're a pro dealer, we have uh, a fulfillment deal. So basically, uh, they'll ship the cards as soon as they're bought, they'll ship the cards out of their inventory to the customer. And then they'll re they'll request us to uh, fill that fulfillment that they filled for us and ship it out to them. That happens every two weeks. That's that 600 number. Um, that has worked phenomenal, right? So it's a little bit like Amazon fulfillment, but it, you don't have to send the cards there. You keep your cards here. When they sell, they ship their cards and you ship your cards to them. 
sometimes they don't agree with, um, you know, oh, I, we don't think that this is a lightly played card, so we're gonna take the funds for that one. We'll ship you back the cards that they don't agree with. Um, and everybody knows how hard I am on these platforms. They, it, they haven't refused enough of our cards to, to upset me. Now, the post office lost. Somehow the box opened on us uh, and we lost about 600 cards um, a few months ago. We've put a thing in with the post office, but you know, I mean, if you guys have ever put a, a claim into the post office, you, you know you're not getting that. But again, cost of doing business, I can take that off as a, uh, off as a loss um, uh, on my taxes through, my, through, my, through the business. Uh, but the platform has been fantastic. Same with Pokemon. We don't do as much Pokemon, but uh, we have about 10,000 rares and uh, base set cards up on TCG Player with that, and they sell fantastic. Um, now, they bought Channel Fireball. I mean, if you guys are into cards, you'll know that company was, was pretty big. They used to run a lot of tournaments. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that TCG player is not interested in running any tournaments. I think they bought uh, Channel Fireball for their inventory. Um, I don't know what they paid for them. I haven't done that research. I'm sure that, that that's out there. Um, although TCG is no longer a private company, they were purchased by eBay. So I'm not really sure if that is available. Uh, but if it is, I'll take a look. If it is, I'll, I'll bring it up at a, late, at a later show. Uh, but their growth has moved into now comic books. And in the second part of this episode, uh, which we're going to film later on, um, I'm going to take you through uh, how we put co comics up on their system. Um, the other great, um, jumping ahead now, but one of the other great parts of this is that once you've entered it into their system, it becomes a kiosk in your shop. So you don't have to have kids' greasy fingers going through all your Magic and Pokemon cards and your Dragon Ball Z cards and all the cards that they carry. They carry Flesh and Blood and Vanguard and like everything that can come through your door pretty much in, in TCG, uh, they'll have. I don't think they do like any of the older ones like Star Trek and Star Wars. But any of the newer ones that are still printing, they have. I believe they also have Weiss. The kiosk is fantastic. So now the comics are going to be on the kiosk as well. Well, they already are. I have about 3,000 to 3,500 comics up on TCG Player now. Um, it's more labor intensive than the cards, but they've just opened it up. And um, I think that they'll get it figured out. And with their scan technology that they have, I think at some point they'll definitely be able to do uh, comics, just scanning them in just as quick as uh, they're doing cards right now. The next move for them is into sports cards. Um, I think the it's been delayed uh, because they were going into comics when they went got purchased by eBay. So that came on board. Um, sports cards was supposed to be starting up sometime by the end of the year. Uh, we haven't heard anything in a little while, so, um, you know, we don't know where that's at. But if they do, there's another outlet. If you're if you're a complete collectible shop, see, I do buy sports cards, but I don't sell them in my shop. I don't have a lot of people that come looking for them here in Port Jervis. I have them that I have access to some of the better stuff. If somebody asks, I can show them what I have, but we don't give any actual floor space to them but I'd love to be able to get rid of them. Um, you know, I've been eking them out to like Heritage and other auction houses um, and turning them the money that way. But I would really like to be uh, on the TCG platform and just be able to be doing fulfillment. Now, it's quite possible we have over 2 million commons and uncommons we call the library. And it takes up a lot of space in the store now. We don't ever stop buying them. Um, they do have the ability, like Amazon, if we brought them to them and they're just out of Syracuse. Currently, you can bring them all their stuff. They'll catalog it. Like they have the machine that reads all the cards at once, like in a big shuffler, they just pour the cards in. 
and then all of our commons and uncommons would be available through their store. Now we're gonna get pennies for them, like very little money, but it's something and they take up a lot of space in the store. So we're contemplating that, the three partners are talking about it, but it, it it's another opportunity. Uh, the other part of the TCG player is they have a, a VAT, uh, I'm sorry, an app um, available on the app store called TCG player. Now it's free to everybody, not just the people that are uh, selling on their platform. What you can, it, it scans the cards. When you take it in a collection, I don't have to take it over to the camera. I just take my phone out. I take out like their best, whatever, 50 card, best hundred cards, whatever. And it is just scan, click, 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 click. And it, and it builds a, um, a list and it with the values. So when I'm taking in a collection, I can quickly um, know what I have to pay for that collection. Uh, you're able to change the um, conditions. So you just click on the card and go in and um, change the condition of a card from lightly played to moderate to damaged, whatever it is. Uh, and it'll change the value of that card. All right, so once you download TCG Player, this is the icon. It is a, tw looks like a 20-sided dice. It loads up. I already have a collection on here, so we can, you know, you can go through the collection, look down. Sometimes uh, your scanner will scan two at a time, so you can actually add one, add two, add four, um, very simply. Uh, you can go into a, card and you can say, oh, that, that picture comes up. That's the picture on the card. Well, you go, I don't really think that's the one. And you can pick a different one and it'll show you the, that picture. You go, oh, that's the right one. Well, but maybe it's not normal. That's only has a normal card. So go over to near mint. It has all the near mint, lightly played, moderately played, heavily played, damaged. You can go to heavy played. Uh, you can change it from English to any of the other languages that Pokemon is printed in. Then you go right back, it shows you the change in the value of the card. And when you want to uh, scan a card, it's just this easy. That sound means the card is scanned. It came down here at the bottom. It's a honey mammoth. It tells you it's only worth four cents. So then you know it's a common card, but you can actually go right into that, make any of the changes. Maybe it was a foil. So you hit foil and then you X back out and it's still only four cents. So it does correct the values. So you always wanna be checking uh, when you're bringing in a collection, this is invaluable uh, in pricing your all your cards up and it will work for many, many different collections. Because they have a lot of sales da data, that's another great reason to be on board with uh, TCG Player because you're gonna find a lot of sales da data there. Um, we used to use Star City for pricing we bought and sold at that. And a lot of people thought that Star City was a bit higher than TCG Player. And I, I think it's just, it's higher in places and lower in other places. It really, as far as um, that goes, I think the pricing is, is, is not as far apart as some people think it is. The good part about TCG Player now is they, have so much sales data because they're selling so many cards that their pricing is is pretty much spot on. It's it's not. Um, I, I think they're moving quite a bit more cards than Star City. Um, and then as far as the comics, they're brand new, so the sales data is a little weak there. So you, when you're listing your comic, you're going to have to know your price. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but you know, you go to eBay, you search the comic, you go over to the side, you go down to sold listings, you look at the sold listings, drop out the lowest one, drop out the ridiculously high one, then come up with an average with the other ones that sold. Um, that will never set you wrong. You'll get a price that the comic will sell at. A lot of people are like, oh, well I want, it sold for $100, I want $100 for it. Well, you may wait 10 months to sell it for $100. And that hundred that if you had sold it for $75, that $75 you could have bought 
20 more of those $75 comics, you know, at $5 a piece or, you know, when you're buying collections, you need that cash flow constantly. So you want to turn the, you want to turn your, your items, your collectibles back into cash as fast as possible. Listen, I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I buy too many collections and it gets away from me and stuff sits for a while before I can get to clean it and then take pictures of it and get it up on eBay and so forth. Um, but you gotta be turning, gotta turn and burn. So you need that cash flow. So know your pricing when you go on TCG Player, you're gonna have to have that for comics. But it's great, you don't have to take pictures, they have pictures of your comics. You do have to grade your comics. Um, the, um, I mean, we probably will do a, a, a show on grading, but uh, if you find an old Overstreet guide, it'll show you, you know, what the different grades are. If you go on to, last week I had the new show uh, about Overstreet Access. They have a whole grading process on their website there too, and what grades are what uh, for for comics. Um, I there's several. Um, resources for grading comics. Um, and then, you know what, if you ever have a question, uh, you know, have your own resources, right? So I have a lot of buddies in the comic industry and if I'm on the fence about something, and a, point, a one point grade makes the difference of grading some books. There are some books that, you know, a point two can make a difference. If I think that a book is a nine six or a nine eight, that it's gonna be in there, um, but I'm very iffy on it. Like, if I think it might be a 9.6 or a 9.8, that means I'm leaning probably more towards the 9.6 and wishing for the 9.8. But I'll show that to a, buddy, a couple of buddies of mine, and you know, if that's a 9.4, that might not be worth grading for a modern book. Now, Silver Age book, anything over an 8.5, it's a great thing to grade, but you know, and knowing, knowing that's a big issue too, but, you can use networking to help you out with the grading. Uh, I've had friends send me pictures. Pictures are a little tough sometimes because the quality of the photo or whatever, but you know, I always try to be as conservative as possible. I, I recently sent out a, um, and I don't grade books, but I sent it to auction. I sent the first Galactics to auction and I thought I was hoping for, I was praying for a 6.5. I really, I really thought it would be a 6.5 and it came back 7.5. And that's probably a 500 to to $1,000 bump. You know, a 6.5 is probably gonna sell for the 1,200, uh, like 1,200 to maybe 1,500. And a, a 7.5 is gonna sell from two grand who knows if if we get word that Galactus is going to show up in Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, or even the Silver Surfer? That's an attachment to the Galactus. You know that could that could be a lot. That could even be up to five grand. But um, that's how important it is in getting your books, knowing your books, the grades on your books. Um, and the other thing is, is when you're selling them through a platform like TCG Player, you want to have a near mint book. Everybody's thinking a near mint book is a 9.8. No, that's a mint book. Mint 9.8, 9, uh, 9, 10 are mint books. Uh, near mint is anything from 8.5 to 9.8. That's what I list as a, a, as a, as a near mint book. Um, so they have a listing near mint and you know, most modern books, if they don't have a, a rip, a fluff, something that's gonna drop below 8.5, I list it as a near mint book. Um, then, you know, it's like 7.5 to 8.5, and then some of the lower ones have a bigger range, um, like Fair, that could be anywhere, uh, if it's not, anything under a two, I consider damaged. Uh, so like 2.5 to f maybe five, is fair and then five to seven five is the the fine. When you're creating your um, list of books on TCG Player, and we're gonna go through and show you how to do that 
Um, you just simply uh, grade your book. You put your amount that you're selling online. And then you want to also put, there's a section to have it on your own website because they give you your own direct page on TCG Player. So you have a store there and you have to have both prices because some people actually price their store a little bit lower for to, to gain uh, people to save their store, to like their store, to continue to come back to their store. I keep it the same. I figure the, the people I have to ship the books to direct, like that are just searching that book and buy that book and not through my store, deserve the same price as my store. That's just my feeling. You can have a different feeling. It's different business models. That's what we talk about all the time. If you have a reason why it's really advantageous to have a different price uh, on your store than uh, in the marketplace, uh, hey, put it in the comments below. But on the next episode, we're gonna go through the kiosk and we're gonna go through the uh, process of actually entering the books into TCG Player. Uh, we'll also uh, provide some links uh, if you're interested in becoming a, a seller on there. Um, and again, this is completely unsolicited by TCG. Um, most of the big companies, if they saw my videos, they'd be like, please don't talk about us. <laughs> but uh, truth be told, uh, I like the platform. I'm a little bit worried about them uh, being purchased by eBay because I've had a very love-hate relationship with eBay, mostly hate. Um, but so far, uh, it, they have stayed to true to the way they've been since we've been with them for six years. And uh, I, I almost kind of wish we had gone bigger with them even sooner, but we are, we are pretty deep with them now. We're probably gonna go a little bit deeper with them uh, because like I said, you gotta sell books. So everybody knows I'm in a small market. The internet is the market. It's, uh, you know, I may not get 5,000 people through my store, but if I can be part of a website that's getting 5,000 people to the, the website every day, um, that's like getting them through your door. So it gives you the opportunity. Uh, once, right, currently they're only Marvel and DC, but they are gonna be opening up Independence shortly, hopefully. Um, I'm very indie centric, so I like the bizarre, the unusual, because there's a lot less people that have it. And it, sales happen quicker for people that are looking for books that they can't find, that people aren't putting up on eBay or on Amazon. So uh, take a look at uh, TCG Player. Um, it's tcgplayer.com. And uh, look at their app on the App Store, TCG Player. It'll help you buy your um, magic, your Pokemon, anything somebody's bringing through the door, it'll be on their flesh and blood, I think is uh, also has a scanner for it. So listen, keep reading comics and open a freaking comic shop. <laughs>